Y.A. Tittle was the first quarterback elected to the Hall of Fame who did not win a championship. He spent 10 seasons in San Francisco and finished his career playing four years with the New York Giants. While he was forever chasing a championship, his daughter, Diane, was fascinated not with football, but with poetry. As Diane grew, she associated her passion for poetry with her father's passion for football, thanks to an ancient Greek named Pindar. The victory odes of Pindar celebrate the moment of victory um, in the life of an athletic hero. The only Pindar that I ever uh, knew was a linebacker with the Green Bay Packers. Pindar saw in the moment of victory a kind of transcendence briefly making radiant a dark and brutal world. And that's when the memory of the 1963 championship between the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears came back to me. And that's when I began my book. After reading all this, I got to thinking, is this, if this is my daughter, I think my real daughter might be in South Carolina, in a cotton field someplace, because we might have got the wrong daughter in the hospital. Let's face it, I mean, no one has written a victory ode in 2,000 years. I really, I really didn't know how to go or what balance to strike exactly. Diane called her victory ode Giants and Heroes, which was ironic because as a young girl, she didn't see her father as a giant or a hero. As I watched my father play, the hardest thing for me was always one little unsettling word, hero. So I guess where most kids have a feeling that their fathers are 10 feet tall, I had a feeling that, or I knew that my father was no bigger than my thumb at least two hours every week on a Sunday afternoon, and I, I worried about him a lot. I didn't see him as invincible. I knew that he was just a mere mortal. In some ways, that's how I think of my father. A fallen warrior, but he's not flat out. He's getting up again. He's gonna come back, come back for more. Reading Diane's book, I realized that I was sort of like that Greek that she's portraying that was in the struggle for excellence. And I always was struggling for excellence. I didn't know I was a Greek warrior until I read Diane's book, I guess. <laughs> He always was a warrior, but his last chance to be a champion came in the 1963 title game against George Hallis' Chicago Bears. I tried to forget the Chicago Bear game, <laughs> and she keeps writing about it. Helmet scratching the frozen ground, breath billowing, Chicago. As Tittle released the ball late in the second quarter at Wrigley Field, his leg fluttered like a moth and the knee tore loose. Dante's Inferno was a birthday party compared to what was happening in the end zone when my father was injured. People were cheering an injury, and that was something I, I wasn't accustomed to. You know, the, I was accustomed to the Giants winning. You know, we had lived a football fairy tale for three years. For three years, ever since Tittle had shown up at the Giant camp, too old to be taken seriously with his tattered body, his old-fashioned high tops and his little boy pads, he had listened to the siren song. They had been picked for last, this team of old Giants. But with Tittle at the helm, they set out to find the Golden Fleece and came up with three division championships in a row. Three championships, no title. And still the siren singing, singing of broken bones and all the years. Tittle refused to let his injury keep him sidelined. Deliberately, he put body back into a cold soul and felt the wind on his face. Putting aside the fury, the anger, the nerves, he became alert as if to find that boy inside himself who remembered the way home and who would help him stand and walk and play the game again. In the end, Tittle threw five interceptions and lost his third straight championship. It was as if the, the whole dream began to unravel. There is a pass. It happened during the fourth quarter just as Tittle went down. He released the ball and drew a picture of his lifetime with the pass. My father considers it the worst game of his career, and I consider it his best. And out of all my years as a spectator, Chicago is the game I find most worth remembering. It was sort of a horrifying heroism. The violence made sense. The violence was practical. But what wasn't practical was the fact that one would spend years and years of one's life in exchange for a moment. But that was the beauty, that he would do that. 
I missed out on that one moment of, of, of excellence, that one desire, that one thing that, that you seek, and that's the ring on your finger. Sounds silly, doesn't it? <laughs> All the sacrifice of getting to the championship game was worth every minute, every second, every play. After the game, I remember I ran up to him to tell him that he was the champion. And he sort of, he looked at me and as if I was the nice, his nice little girl who was trying to make him feel better. But I wasn't trying to make him feel better. That was the truth. He really was the champion to me. And um, he was the champion in my soul. My daughter looking back at her father, not knowing that he was a hero, and then now realizing that he was a hero. And that sort of thrills me. As I watch that game, maybe when he reads my book, he'll see that there's, that he didn't get the wrong baby at the hospital. <laughs>